Today on the Taste of History, I'm so excited. I am in Guyana, the most gorgeous country. Beautiful fresh vegetables, beautiful people. We're gonna show you some recipes that date back to the Amerindian days. Today I'll be making a Guyanese fish cake. We'll make the famous, famous duck curry, and we make a cook up rice. Dishes that have been in the culture of Guyana for a long time to bring you a taste of history from Guyana. Guyana means the land of many waters in the native Amerindian language. I'm standing in front of Kaitor Falls, one of the tallest in the world. Kaitor Falls is located in the middle of Guyana's rainforest. It is a country not only rich in resources, but also in cultures. Guyana was first inhabited by the Amerindian people who migrated east from Chile. We visited this Amerindian village of the Mapuche tribe, deep in the interior savanna. We have 529 population, the, the people here living in the central Ani. The Mapuche people still live off the land, as they have for centuries. Banana, edol, sugar cane, and cassava. And this is how the cassava look, right? And probably this is very young. Cassava root, a starchy tuber, is a staple of the Amerindian diet. This is bitter cassava and red potato. Remember, it carries little poison, so we have to boil it long, at least about three hours. Oh, good flavor to it. Amerindian were the first people who come from Mongolia to Guyana. It is believed that some 12,000 years ago, the Bering Strait provided a land bridge for Asian migration to form the native populations of South America. Europeans arrived in the form of Spanish explorers in 1499, followed by the Dutch and Portuguese. It was eventually the British who took long-term control of the country, starting in the early 1800s. Slaves worked the sugarcane fields, but when Britain outlawed colonial slavery in 1834, Asian immigrants flowed in instead as indentured workers. Muslim mosques can be seen next to Buddhist temples, next to Christian churches. My four parents came here from Africa. My ancestors came from Morocco, which is highly populated by Amerindians. My grandmother actually had a bit of Chinese and my great-grandfather actually had a bit of Portuguese. So I'm one big Guyana cook-up altogether. The legacy of this mixture of Asian, African, indigenous and British cultures has created a fusion of wonderful flavors. Look at it, beautiful. What do you call those? Carrillos, huh? It's bitter, it has a nice bitter flavor to it. You got beautiful stuff here, my lady. You grow it all yourself? Rice coat. Rice very nice, beautiful. Those peppers look so innocent, but believe me, they got more power than any pepper you've ever seen. Guyana, a cultural melting pot that is a land of many flavors. For our first recipe, I have Chef Romania here from Pegasus Hotel, and she's going to help me make this fantastic, fantastic Guyanese fish cake that uses a salted fish. In many parts of the world, they use cod, but here... We use the bango fish or the sea trout. Soaked it overnight, and then basically just put it in water and boil it. Yes. It's a very simple recipe, but very, very tasty. Romania is chopping up the garlic, the onions she already chopped. I have potatoes. Now, the interesting thing with that is, this dish takes a little bit advanced preparation. You want to make sure that the potatoes are cooked and get cold. 
before you mix it all together. The same goes with the salt fish. So it's a kind of dish you don't have to worry too much about a lot of finesse because it's a hearty dish, but it's something that is still made a lot. We make it all the time. See, so it's basically, it's a kind of like a, a stable. There is echalot they call here, which we call green onions. Now she's gonna chop it up and put this stuff right in this little bowl here. And a little bit of celery, but it's the top of the celery that's much more flavor. When you make this in the family, is it usually on a Sunday or when you make it any Yes, time? well, basically we make it on a Sunday because everyone is home and we eat it with the um, cocoa rice. That's, uh, which <laughs> yes. we're going to make next. So. Yeah. So tell me those peppers here. They look so innocent. These peppers is a mariri pepper mm -hmm. and it's usually very hot. So mm -hmm. They're hard to find those peppers. Some places have them. Yes. But this is a very good idea to wear a rubber glove and don't touch anything sensitive when cutting those peppers because they have a lot of heat. I just squeeze the lime juice in here. Very simple. And here we go. We're just gonna put the, the celery in here. We're gonna cut a little bit of the bird pepper in it too while, while we have you. Little bird pepper. Romania, why don't you uh, get a piece of the fish? Pull it off so we'll get to show the people. So we just wanna pull the meat off made out of bones and stick it in our in our mixture. How, how simple is that so far, right? We had to pre-prepare the mix because the potatoes, like I said, have to sit up. I have some oil on the skillet and I put a little butter into it. So it's a nice flavor. And now what we'll do is we'll make the fritters. Now, any size you want to make them, you got to do them the same size, like about so. So all you do is you hand form those, just like I'm, I'm doing here. And then what you're going to do, it's very important. Now, there are many cultures in the Caribbean that do them differently. Some put breadcrumbs, some don't, but here in Guyana, it's all with flour, but you want to be very generous on the flour. Very generous. So let's make a bunch of those, lay them over here on the board, yep. I tell you, just forming them, the flavor comes right through it of the, the peppers and, and, the the, and the garlic and the celery and the uh, echalots or the green onions as we call them, it's beautiful. Romani, why do you put some in the skillet? Because I can hardly wait to, uh, to taste your handiwork. Beautiful aroma. So now you want to just cook them uh, until they're crisp on both sides and uh, we'll be ready to enjoy them. What do you think about that? Those fish cakes smell so good. Tell me one more time so I can remember what went in it so we know. Okay, well, we used the salted snapper. Mm -hmm. So we boiled it and had it done. So we had the potatoes, we used a little onions, garlic, peppers, eggs. And my new favorite ingredients? Is the echelot. Which we call scallions in different places, but I'm telling you, this recipe would not work without it. This is what gets the flavor, don't you Yes, think? it does. I think you're ready to, uh, to turn your, uh, your fish cake. They look fantastic. Beautiful. Yeah. Three, four minutes each side until nice and golden brown. Golden brown, brown yes. Everything is basically cooked, and what is not cooked, you want a little crispy. You want the yes. onions, you want the garlic, you want the flavors of the peppers. Those fish cakes look ready. Let's plate them up. I have a little uh, lime slices here. They look so delicious. Okay, let's garnish up this uh, little plate of ours, my new best friend, my little peppers you introduced me to. A little parsley on top, yeah. Why don't we try our handiwork, what do you think? Sure. Let's see how this uh, guy and his fish cake taste. Wow. <laughs> Man, it's good. It has a distinguished flavor of the salt fish. And the garlic, mm -hmm. yes, and the onions. And, the, and I'll tell you something. I can see why people are, get hooked on those. I'm going to be hooked from now on. Except I know how to make it because she <laughs> gave me the recipe. <laughs> you see the sparrows behind me? They're here for a good reason. We'll tell you the story of rum. To see how rum is made, we journeyed to the fascinating country of Guyana on the northeast coast of South America. Georgetown, the capital, is on the Atlantic Ocean. It is bisected by the Demerara River, which is much like the Mississippi, wide, choppy, and muddy. 
Water is a very essential part in the growing of sugarcane. The water of the Demerara River is full of nutrients, and henceforth some of the best sugarcane is produced right here in this flatland. We came to Guyana because sugarcane is still harvested here in much the same way as it has been for centuries. The cut canes are bundled and loaded onto these barges. Canal systems introduced by the Dutch in the 1600s still crisscross the country to this day, enabling the cane to be floated to the nearby sugar mill. In the 18th century, windmills and animal power were used to crush the stalks to extract the precious cane juice. Today, large industrial plants do the work. But in much the same way, the cane juice is crystallized and then boiled in huge vats to produce molasses. That's where the magic begins. Mmm, I can taste the rum already. <laughs> we visited the El Dorado Distillery in Georgetown. For over three centuries, we have been distilling rum. Here at this modern distillery, yeast is introduced into the molasses to start the fermentation process. Modern stills and older wooden ones work side by side to create different marks or signatures during distilling. The rums come off of the stills with all of the flavors and aromas that we want. None of it is added after. Walter, in this room we have 45,000 barrels. It's a lot of inventory. But I guess this is the most important part of rum making, isn't it? After 48 hours, the rum is ready to be put in casks. These wooden barrels are still hand-assembled on site. Without the master cuber like him, there'd be no rum. You couldn't age it. When the rum comes out of our pot still distillation, it looks like this. It's colorless. This oak barrel, what it does for the rum, it gives it its color. And during the natural process of aging, this is what the rum looks like when it comes out of the barrel. Sharon, I see you got a barrel open. How nice. I've been waiting for this all morning. Yeah, Walter, oh. this is a good opportunity for you to try flavorful rum from our pot still. The flavor, the aroma, it's a powerful, this one there, you know. Demerara rum is still enjoyed today in the land of many waters. I'm fortunate to have Vivona here today, who is a chef at Pegasus, an expert on curry making, and she is gonna show me one of the great dishes Guyana has that might surprise you. It's called duck curry. It's actually so big, they have national festivals, everybody does it, but I will tell you, not one person makes the same curry. Am I right or not? Yes. <laughs> so go ahead, tell me what you're making for me. First thing, we take out the legs, wings, and the neck first to make the stock. It looks to me like you've uh, done a few ducks in your days, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that at home you make a lot of curry. You, you make duck curry, chicken curry. What else do you make with curry? We make vegetable curry also. Uh -huh. We also use it in mutton curry. Mm. I cannot contribute much to your recipe today <laughs> because you know it so well. But the one thing I want to tell the people at home quick is that cumin that we use a lot in uh, Tex-Mex and Mexican cooking, stuff like it, is an essential part of your curry paste that you're making today between the masala and the curry and the, what you call it here? Chiro. 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 And basically, if you don't have the ground like you have it here, the best way to do it is you, you toast the cumin seeds and you take them and put them on your grinding stone. Isn't that powerful aroma, huh? It's mind unbelievable. Now, do you do it sometimes as well, like so? Or? Yes, we do it like that. Yeah. Just make sure that it's nice and fine. Yeah. Oh, man, that's like... Now, obviously, in modern days, you can use a spice grinder or coffee grinder that works, you know. I had the pleasure to be in a, a guy in his woman's house the other day, and she made her version of a, of a duck curry. And it was so intriguing, it kind of gave me the idea. Freshly picked thyme, 
You can smell it's yeah, highly scented, yeah. It's highly and it's fresh thyme. Fresh thyme. This is my mom, and we are fifth generation uh, East Indians. We bring rich heritage to Guyana. So let's see how we do yours. A little bit of tomatoes. And we want this to look nice and big because when it go into the car, if you cut it too small, it's going to get mashed, you're able to notice it. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of ginger. Ginger is always good for any curry. Any curry is very good. The lady I cooked me the other day, she did not use ginger. She thought that uh, hers without ginger was better. So I guess everybody has their own little first. Yes, right? the ginger would make it a little bit spicier. Yep. wouldn't taste in the pepper so much inside. Yep. So everybody has their own version. And yes. the Guyanese like the potato. I can see that already. Because I made, a, I made the, the fish cake earlier, and I use yam in many other places. Here I use potatoes. The shallots you can put in there as well. Yes, put a little bit of shallot uh -huh. inside. Now we want to put on the curry first. Mm -hmm. So you want to fry this up a little bit in there. Yeah. Just a little. Gosh, the flavor of that uh, cumin, it's, here, I mean, it's unbelievable in the garlic. Really, really nice. The flavors of Guyana comes right out of this wok. Mine's really good. Next, add some duck to it. Just want to make sure this is nice. Did I do it good for you? I make sure the curry doesn't burn. Perfect. Because I know how curry sets up. So now put some masala into it. Some masala. Mm-hmm. A little to taste, to bring uh -huh. out that real flavor in the curry. Yes, excellent. Next comes the uh, potatoes. Some carrots. Yeah, my carrots. <laughs> First time ever somebody in Guyana put carrots in their curry, right? Yes. But never say no because it's beautiful. It's good for your eyesight. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. You put a little the bit of salt, salt. A little bit of pepper. you telling me you don't like my carrots in there? It looks so nice. <laughs> you know so much about curry. It's just because you, you eat a lot of curry. Your family eats a lot of curry. Yes, my or mom, you... she's an excellent cook of curry. So from her, I grow knowing her making that curry, that's why I'm so, I know so much about yeah. it. And she learned it from her mom, I would assume, yes, and her she, mom? Um, yes. Fantastic. Where's your family come from? They came all the way from Asia. Mm -hmm. so that's why I know to make such fantastic curry. No, yeah, I know. Your reputation precedes you. So let me try this stock because we, uh... oh yeah, that's beautiful. This is the stock from the legs and the backs and everything like that. There we go. And all it does now, it doesn't take long because the duck is so lean. It'll break about 30 minutes to finish. You just want to see the stack and the... Oh! That is a serious, serious flavor. I can see why you're the queen of curry. It's very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's got to cook a little bit down and be in business. I mean, that is fantastic. Tell me something, you know, it's my first time in Guyana, first time meeting you, first time eating your curry, but also first time cooking on that, with what I call almost a contraption. Yes, this holds a lot of heat, and this would make cooking easier. And it's just made out of mud, right? Yes, it's just made out of mud. You put mud on it every day, it would keep the heat, it cook faster. So as it dries, it then gets more firepower. Very interesting. The curry duck is simmering away. It smells fantastic. Now we're going to make what goes with it, which is another Guyanese specialty. They call it cook-up rice, and there are as many variations of cook-up rice as they are making a curry. Yes. Romagna is going to make the rice with me and tell me a little about it, because like I said, there are so many variations. Tell me yours today, and let's make this rice. I'm hungry. Today we are using the lean beef, but usually we use the chicken, the tripe, you can put the foot in there, the neck inside, but today we're going to use the lean beef. Looks like a nice leg meat. I happen to like this particular meat for that because okay. it has more flavor. And what I do sometimes, see the, the bone, the, uh -huh. the marrow bone, I throw it right in the pot. Look at that. We can cook right away. It's so beautiful. Okay, chef, why don't you put the beef in there while I start the onions? Perfect. A little bit of oil. Just get it nice and... You know, it's taken all day. I finally figured out it's stove, you know. <laughs> Remember, I'm not an Amerindian native, so I had to improvise. Yeah. 
Perfect. Some peppers. Lots of pepper. The crew likes that hot. You see, she's smart. Don't use your hand for that. <laughs> you burn yourself a few times, you'll yes, know. Yes, you would. Yeah. Perfect. Gosh, the aroma of these peppers. Salt pepper a little bit, yeah. All right. Yeah, let, let it cook a little. little bit, yeah. yeah. Then you add in the rice. Just this regular. here is regular carby rice. Yeah. That everyone uses. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, like we use stateside. Very straightforward. And uh, you ready for the milk? Here? Yeah, you ready. Yep. The most important part is your coconut milk. Yeah. And a little stock a little that stock. we made with the beef. Yeah. So you put some. We can of put your, some of this here. You can put the peas in. Okay. As very I good. This. Now the beans have been pre-cooked or blanched because otherwise they would take too much time. Then you're gonna put some. Uh, this here is pie. um yeah. Oh, great! Flavor dynamite. Let me just chop some of yeah. the. Yeah, the scallion very important. Fresh thyme and the eschalot, so we call it green onion. And then we're gonna check this for the salt and pepper, right? And we can put the lid on it and 35 minutes. Check it out, the heat is good. I, I, I definitely got the pepper. Oh, it's hot. Good though. <laughs> Lots of good flavor. Put a little bit more of this stuff. All right. Good. What a day in lovely Guyana with my two helpers here, two great chefs from the Pegasus Hotel that helped me make this fantastic meal. Guyanese fish cake with salt fish and the potatoes, duck curry, and we have the cook-up rice, which is a staple of Guyana. And if you Let do the honors, sir, sir, for you. do the honors and plate it up for us, that'd be fantastic. Let's see this true taste of Guyana. Dynamite flavor. Man, man, man. What do you think about the curry? Wow. <laughs> I never know the curry cook. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. And people always wonder, but it's good for you. But it's really tasty. It's an unforgettable day here in Guyana. Unforgettable. You guys have been so great. Thank and you have you. so much passion for your country, for your culture, for the cooking, that I must come back. <laughs> I will be coming back. So let's have a toast. I want to thank my Guyanese chefs here that made it possible for me to bring you a special taste of history from Guyana.